Hi, my name is Adam and in this video, hopefully by the end of it, you found the answer to the problem with your garage door opener. There's a lot of things that can go wrong and most of it you can fix yourself, at least if you have a little bit of skill. So I'm going to go through all the common problems that you might find with a garage door opener. The one that I'm going to be showing is uh, has a chain drive, um, it's just the standard type, you know, it has a torsion spring. The one that you see most often, and even though your model might be a little bit different or have a few different components like a rubber belt instead of a chain, uh, a lot of the problems are still going to be the same and so hopefully this will fix whatever problems you have. Alright, so let's assume that you're pushing your button on the remote control or the wall and nothing's happening at all. Well, you want to check to see if you're getting power. So you can either plug something into that outlet you see on the garage uh, ceiling there, there's a little outlet. Plug something else into there and see if it's working. Also, you can look at the sensors. There's a little LED light on there. Are they out? Are both of them out? And you can look at the little button switch on the wall. And it usually has an LED on it as well. And you can check and see if that's out. If your outlet's not giving you any power, you want to go to your main control panel in your house and look at the breaker switch. And probably you're going to need to reset it. Another thing you want to check is to make sure that you didn't actually lock your garage door opener. This little button here, if held down, can lock this whole system so that um, your remotes won't work at all. Let's see, I got the remote right here and it opens. So I'm going to show you, it's hard to see the LED. Let me wait for this to finish opening. Okay, so you see that little LED there, and that's the little button that you push when you actually push this whole little white thing. So I'm going to hold down the lock button, and I don't know if you can see, but that's flashing. There you go. So now if I use the remote, nothing's happening. So maybe that's your problem. You just hold this back down for a while till the LED is just constantly on. Next we're going to talk about the sensors. Now this is usually the problem with most people's garage door openers and that's that these are right down to just a few inches um, off the ground and garbage cans or bikes or whatever, people kick them, they get knocked out of, out of alignment. What this does is shoots a beam of light all the way across so that when the garage door is coming down, if there's something in the way, it won't, it won't close on it. So you're going to want to check, is there something in the way? A lot of times there might be a shovel or something that moved over and is blocking the beam of light. So make sure that the beam of light is, uh, is clear and there's nothing blocking. Also, I have a whole video on these things, but I'll talk about it real quick. You can clean the sensors, make sure they're not dirty. They should be pointed straight across. Now they're not like laser beam specific. They go a little broader than that, but you, you want to have them um, pointing straight across. Also, make sure that it's aligned this way. You don't want it pointing that way. These can get knocked, they're just held on with tension there. So make sure that it's straight. And also, you can see this has a little LED there. And way down there, let me zoom in, is another LED. So now watch what happens when I move my hand into the beam of light. You see the LED goes off. So if you look at your sensors, and one of them's off, you know that either it's misaligned or there's something wrong. And it's, it's saying that it's not receiving anything. If my hand's in the way, you can see it's an obvious block. So that's how you're going to know it's a sensor problem. If you're aligning it and everything's working, I mean it's all aligned and you know it's all straight and the lenses are clean and everything, check to see that your wires aren't broken. Sometimes if something hit these, you know, people pack a lot of stuff in their garage. So maybe a shovel or something came down and, and broke the wire. You're going to want to make sure that, check it all the way up and see if it's good. So if you've done all that and the wire looks good, it's all aligned, and you still want to make sure that it's not a, a problem with the sensor, um, there's another test you can do. So I'm going to block this. And now it won't want to close. Uh, when I push the button. So let's run over to the button. You can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to push this button and this light will flash saying, hey, there's something blocking. So here we go. And that blinks saying, hey, there's something in the way. But if I hold this button down and don't let it up, this door will close. That's a way to override the sensor to see if you 
um, if your sensor is the problem. So I'm going to hold it down. And you can see the door is closing anyway, even with that th paper in the way. So if you try this and you can now close the door, you know that you have a sensor problem. So you might have a bad sensor. Okay, so let's say you think it's your remote that's not working. You can check these out by, there's a little slot there. You can put a coin in and twist it. Or you can just use your fingernails like I do and uh, crack it open. And this remote uh, actually was my father's and he said he couldn't get it to work. He was just going to buy a new one. So I just popped it open and I can immediately see the problem is he's got the wrong battery in there. Uh, this came from a previous homeowner. He bought a home and gave him the remote and they had the wrong battery. This is a 2025. It should be a 2032. So what I did to get this to work, at least for a little while longer, was just flick this piece of metal up so there's more tension because these batteries are thinner than a 2032. So have the right battery or replace your battery. You saw how easy that was to do. Somewhere on your garage door opener is going to be a little learn button. And this one is behind this plastic cover. You can see it's purple, it's right here. So once I push it, that little LED comes on and is waiting for a signal from the remote. And once I push this, you're gonna see this flash saying, yep, I got it, I learned the code, so I'm gonna hold that. That's that easy. Now this thing has this code stored. If it's your keypad that's not working, a lot of people don't know this, but these actually have batteries. And this one you push down, and this plastic's a bit tight, but there we go. And you can see it uses a nine volt battery. So you might just need to replace that. So give that a test if your keypad's not working. Also on here is all the instructions on how to program it. It's pretty simple. So just read that if you're having programming problems um, and it'll help you set up the pins and change your codes. If your car has a built-in garage door opener, it's this home link system and you've never figured out how to be able to program it, I got a whole video on that. It's actually where you're holding the remote that can make a big difference in programming. So check that out and that should solve your problem if you're having trouble with that. So let's say you know your remote is good and you change the battery, all that's still not working. Well, next thing you can do, it's not so fun, these options, but unplug your opener. You're going to get a screwdriver and take off this back panel with a few of these screws. So I'm going to do that now and skip right ahead. Okay, screws are off and these two screws are not the same as this one. So remember that when you're putting it back together. Um, so this comes off. And you can see this purple antenna wire, you're going to want to check and make sure that there's no break in it. If there is, you might have to re-solder it to the board. Or you could put on a thicker, longer one and uh, you get, might get better reception to your remote. Another thing to check is uh, the connections, the solder joints on the board. I have a whole video on that if you want to look at those. Maybe re-soldering some of the uh, joints if they're cracked, that'll help get the connections right to your board. One last thing you might want to check if your remote's not working is are you getting RFI, that's radio frequency interference. Um, it's a new phenomenon with all these LED bulbs. A lot of the LEDs will create a radio frequency that clashes with this opener and causes problems. And so a lot of people are reporting that when their garden lights on, if they have new garden LED lights or some of their home lights, if those are on, then their garage door won't work. But if their lights are off, then the garage door opener works. So the only real way that I know of um, to fix that is to not have those kind of bolts. Since I have this opened up, let's take a look inside. Now what parts in here might be going bad? Well, and right there, this big green board is the, the main board. And if you've had a lightning strike around your neighborhood or close to your home, this could be fried and you might need a new one. And uh, I got a whole video on how to replace that. And usually, a lot of times, you're going to find it's this entire piece that I'm holding here. The, the, you know, the back plastic, this is the power supply there, and it converts the power to, you know, what the parts need. But you can look at your model number and go on eBay or whatever and order a new one of these if that's what you think your problem is, if nothing's working at all. 
Also, here's another part that fails a lot, and it's capacitors. This fails in a lot of electronics and uh, things like this. This is a pretty big one because it's a heavy duty um, job it needs to do. And uh, you can see right there's the writing that you're going to be able to find uh, a replacement from. So you can just look it up online. And it's, it's got some clips in the other end. You just swap it out. It's like, like uh, a couple of plugs on the other side. So how do you know if your capacitor is bad? Well, if it's bulging or leaking uh, around the end cap, there's, there's going to be a little bit of a seal. And if it looks like gunk is coming out, that's a dead giveaway that it's bad. But, you know, it could be bad and show no physical signs. Um, and to buy a capacitor tester to test one that big is going to be kind of expensive. But the capacitors themselves aren't that expensive. So if you're, um, if you're checking everything and everything else looks good, you might want to suspect that. Inside, there's, um, you know, there's like this liquid and stuff. They're kind of like batteries. So you know how batteries go bad after a while, um, or can go bad. These can go bad too on their own. So you might want to check that out. Sometimes your gears go bad. If you open this up and you see ground plastic all over the place, um, especially you see those little black bits? That's coming from above here. You can see a little bit of wear. That's not so bad. If you see a lot of ground up bits, you got things that are wearing out. And uh, one thing that can often happen with these chains here is if your chain is too tight, if you tighten it too much, you can break this sprocket off, this uh, gear here. And this metal shaft goes all the way down here and uh, you're going to have to replace this whole thing. They sell a kit to replace all these gears. So you, that could be what you have to do if you find that uh, you come in and your chain's drooping, well, a lot of times it's because this broke. So what are the signs of a bad garage door capacitor? Well, if it's uh, erratic or it just doesn't seem to be, the motor just seems to not want to spin or the motor sounds like it's humming. Um, what those do is they uh, kind of provide a burst of electricity and kind of filter it at the same time. They're kind of a little more complicated than just batteries. But um, it's not a, an expensive fix. So as long as you buy the right one, it shouldn't be too much of a problem to swap it out. And by the way, here's where all your sensors and your wall um, button and everything connects to. So if you're having a problem and you're not getting electricity in one of your sensors, maybe these wires slipped right out or they're corroded or crusty. You can push this little button to help release it. But if these are, you know, give them a yank, they shouldn't pop out on their own. If they do, you got to shove it back in and maybe that was your problem. So what do you do if your garage door just seems like it's not working right? The garage door is going up or down but not all the way or stopping, things like that. Well, you want to check this spring. What this does is it stores energy. It's a torsion spring and it's wound really tight. So it takes the weight off of the door that this is opening. Really, this opener is just pulling up and down a door that should be neutrally balanced. Um, these shouldn't be hard to pull up and down because of the tension in this spring. So what we're going to do is check these doors for balance. So, and you only do this when it's closed. Never do this when the garage door is open because if you pull this safety cord and this thing's um, out of balance, if this spring has a problem, it'll come crashing down and slam. And that's a real problem if you've got a heavy uh, door or wood door, but it can bust your door up and big trouble. So anyway, since it's down, we're safe and we got nothing to worry about. I'm going to grab this safety cord and it detaches it. That trolley there detaches from uh, the cable and I am now able to lift this to see, let me lift in the middle here. See how hard it is or not hard. You can see I can do it with a finger. This is just one door though, so this isn't that much weight. It's not like that one where it's a double door. That one's going to be uh, heavier. But you can see here, 
it's not falling it's on its own and uh, you know generally they should be able to stay balanced in the middle and be able to open and close without much problem this one wants to fall a bit there we go this one's okay I can tell that the torsion spring might need a little bit more winding and to do that um, you can do it yourself a lot of people say it's super dangerous I've never had to work on one of these luckily but um, if there's a gap in here or this looks bo uh, busted or you can see a division in the spring you know you have a broken one and there's a uh, a bolt right there that you're going to have to undo if you just want to tighten it and then you put rods in there and spin it but that's a whole other lesson that you need and you can watch some other videos on that I'm not going to show you how to do that hopefully that's not your problem because it's not a fun repair so anyway let me put this track back in alignment you can see we detached it excuse me we detached it so to put it back in you just Till it clicks now you see this is horizontal went up and clicked so if your garage door isn't closing all the way and your spring is good we just check that we check the balance um, you could have a problem with your tracks I have a whole video um, that talks about how to properly see if you have enough space here these rollers can pinch on this rail and if they're pinching on this the garage door is going to try to go down and stop and then it's going to go back up. So you want to make sure the gap is right and uh, look at the description below to watch that video. It's, it's pretty easy. You're just um, undoing this bolt and moving the track out so that there's enough play so that it doesn't pinch the door when it goes down. Okay, we talked a bit about this before, um, but if you come in and you're using your garage door and it's really loud, if you're hearing that kind of noise this chain banging around well your chains too loose you don't want it too tight you don't want it too loose but these are long chains and after a while they can kind of fatigue on their own and stretch a little bit so they're going to start hitting things and you don't want it to hit stuff like the trolley when it's going by and um, you don't want a loose chain because it can come off these gears as well so to tighten your chain On this brand, this is a Chamberlain Liftmaster, you do it right here. I'll have a whole video on how to tighten the chain. You can see the nuts and the bolts, you just adjust it here. If you want to see all the details on that, you can click uh, the other video in the description. But you, you loosen one and you dust the other. And you just want it enough that it's not um, hitting the metal. You don't want it super tight like a bicycle chain because it'll add too much tension to that uh, gear on that end and it could bust the gear off. Um, I know, I think, uh, what brand is it? What's the other brand? Some of the brands have, instead of this, will have um, an adjustment screw here that pulls this wheel back to adjust the chain. So you might have that kind. So that's most of the problems with garage door openers. Usually sensors, sometimes a bad board, sometimes bad capacitor, things like that, um, misaligned tracks. But if you're still having trouble, you can check all these little nuts and bolts everywhere. You know, are these coming loose? If they are, if this is coming loose, then this roller is going to be loose and it's going to pinch and bind. So you're going to want to look at all the hardware. Is this cable coming undone? You know, is, if this is flopping around, that's the obvious sign that your cable uh, there got disconnected. There's little parts everywhere. So you want to check all these nuts and bolts to see if anything's looking wrong. If it is, then there's your problem usually. So a lot of the times with garage doors, you're going to find a visual clue on what might be wrong. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found the problem that you were having and a way to fix it. If not, you can leave me a comment in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer. And usually, again, it's the sensors that are misaligned or the tracks are a little misaligned. That's what I find to be the problem in most cases. Uh, sometimes it's the other things in the video as well. But this is going to address probably 90% of everything you're going to have a problem with. 
If this video has been helpful to you, click subscribe and you'll get updates on more videos like this. If you want to support this channel, you can uh, go to the About tab and click the Support button. Also, don't forget to click Like. And thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.